Are we, we're filming about the Amoco liquid underglazes, which I've been using since the early 80s. Yes, we it's are. All I you know, it's all I use. It's all you use? Yes. Do you use them? You use them. I do use them, yeah. <laughs> are you going to show me how you use the Amoco underglazes? You know, I just started today. I'm just learning. <laughs> and there's something interesting. I have my own white slip, but this is... <laughs> This is their the Amoco liquid underglaze white. It's a lot wider than mine. Oh. So I actually like to use it when I mix the colors. Okay. And I, I like doing these because they're somewhat quick. And you know, this is like finger painting. This is not white finger painting. It is finger painting. But you know, it takes 45 years to learn how to do this. <laughs> I have a whole array of colors. And I've kind of pared down, maybe, like so you, you get that. And then I go back and just put a little green in there. So grass, and then some stems for the flowers. Put a little chartreuse. I don't think I'm supposed to have to say the numbers, do I? Well, what chartreuse, are the numbers you're using? L chartreuse, L-U-G. Stands for liquid underglaze from Emico 40. Nice. I think it would be nice if people they like oh, your color palettes. You're right. Then Jill, you are something. <laughs> so this that is a good idea, really. And dark green, L-U-G, we can just say lug. Yeah. 43. And then the great, really opaque, beautiful white is the tint number 10. So I got the stems there, and then maybe I'll do some red flowers. I think I should do one with a brush also, don't you reckon? I think you should yeah. do one with a brush. And then I just take a little white. So do you find they mix just like paints? What's the great thing about the Amoco liquid <laughs> underglaze, you know, the velvets are the same, you know, they don't melt, so you can mix them like paint. However, I don't know the color wheel. I don't. So I mix them, but just intuitively, I don't really know what colors make what. And then I really, last year, I started using this number 25, it's turquoise, it's magnificent. So. I'm going to put a little blue sky on there. Put a little white in it, you know. So there, you know, I got over that. I just messed that up, you know, because I drugged that blue over there. So I just fixed it, you know, like that. And then this magnificent black. I want to say this. I use these. So this is like bare, you know, um, I decorate on greenware, bisque and then use my own clear glaze. Mm -hmm. When I do my Yolica, which is my redneck my Yolica glaze, it's not the real one, I use the same underglazes. And I just, some of them I don't even flux. Oh. Some of them I put a little frit, most of them I don't flux. But we're only talking about 03, 02. Okay. They work great, yeah. And then this black, I just love this black, you know. And it sort of adds a little border, you know. So three flowers, and then I, I want to do one with the brush. Great. But I, I, I'm just going to do this. Uh, and then we'll take... And how long can you keep this um, palette going? I'm not joking with you, that's a great question. What I do is... When I go in this evening, I'll spray that with some water mm -hmm. and put a piece of plastic over it. <laughs> and then it's good to go? I never put them back in the jar. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, this is that double load brush thing. Ah! Uh, yeah. <laughs> you a yeah. Bob Ross fan? But I'm a Bob Ross fan. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't even own a TV, you know. Yeah. You don't have to own a TV, you love yeah. Bob Ross. So, you get that. It's just, I mean, who can, everybody can do this. Everybody can do this. You two watching at home, you can do this. <laughs> it's a George's House of Clay painting demonstration.
Excuse me for a moment. I'm going to go over here. I'm going over to the brush area. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, I'll use this brush that Linda Arbuckle gave me. Oh, let's see that Linda Arbuckle brush. This dagger thing, she called it dagger brush. So I like to just wet it a little bit. Just mix those two together, make it a little lighter, you know? Uh -huh. A little, more, a little more white. So, you know, I'm not trying to make a real... Oh boy, that was a good one. See that? You got that little white in there? See, those? that's better than those. Yeah, you really got a stark contrast. I'm gonna, it. yeah, I think I'm gonna, see? I can try to fix it. Oh, ho, ho. see those? Nice. Shoot. Hang on, put it back up there like that. See, those are the good ones. And what's amazing, even though that's light, when you put that clear glaze, it looks exactly like that. I'm gonna, ooh, too much. How much ouzo do you have to have for Amoco to work well? Do we have three drinks or two? Two. I need another one. <laughs> <laughs> and then, as you know, once I fire this, I've been going back with a little gold luster. Mm. And doing that. Although, when you use the Amoco <laughs> liquid underglazes, you don't need the gold luster. They're fine the way they are. <laughs> so I know all these kind of look alike. It's, a, it's called a series, you know? Yes. That's how people know it's by the same artist, right? Exactly. Now, I think people that know the color wheel, they can make something real out of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is a soda fired pot. Okay. It's thrown and altered, and then uh, my white redneck Mayolica glaze, mm -hmm. soda fired, and then I mixed up. A thin coat of that number 58 red. Okay. And painted that on there and refired it. To what temp? Oh, cone one. Okay. Yeah. So my point is this is, you know, everybody can do this. Everybody.